these are uh, preliminary results uh, of um, a new project that we have in the lab that is purging the HIV reservoir through the disruption of the PD-1 pathway. So you all, all know the, the first point of this presentation that in Viromix donors, uh, HIV infected cells do generally survive for long enough to revert back to resting state. However, a small fraction of these cells enter into latency and constitute a stable uh, latent reservoir. Uh, these cells were identified as being a small pool of central memory and transitional memory T cells. Uh, that persist in patients receiving hearts. And of course, we need to develop strate uh, targeted strategies to uh, purge these uh, reservoir cells. So we still don't uh, fully understand the mechanism implicated in the establishment and the persistence of the HIV reservoir. And we have the hypothesis that some factors that interfere with CD4 plus T cells activation and proliferation could have a major impact on the establish establishment and or the maintenance of the HIV-1 reservoir. So HIV specific CD4 plus T cells are preferentially infected and they also express high levels of the PD-1 protein. So PD-1 is a factor that uh, negatively regulates uh, the, the cells and is uh, highly expressed in T cells, B cells and uh, also monocytes. So can PD-1 play a role in the establishment of the latency by repressing the HIV transcription and leading to a small pool of uh, quiescent latently infected cells? That's uh, our hypothesis. So first, uh, a role for PD-1 in the establishment of uh, the reservoir. Uh, the establishment of a stable reservoir for HIV necessitates the establishment of viral latency, meaning the inhibition of viral production. So does PD-1 triggering inhibit viral production in HIV-infected primary CD4 plus T cells? To assess this uh, hypothesis, we took um, PBMCs from HIV-infected uh, viromic subjects. We purified the CD4 plus T cells, which was stimulated with CD3, CD28 coated on magnetic beads in the presence of uh, or absence of uh, the PDL1, so the ligand of uh, PD-1. And we measure the viral production by P24 ELISA. And as you can see on these four different donors, the triggering of the PD-1 pathway inhibits 95% of the HIV-1 production in the primary CD4 plus T cells at the day three. Uh, you can see that that's the blue, uh, the blue line. The, um, the, the scale is a logarithmic uh, scale. So to confirm this, uh, this, uh, this results, we wanted to uh, know what could happen at early time points before day three. And for that, we develop a, a sensitive assay to measure the viral production. So we take the HIV infected donor cells, uh, PBMCs, we uh, purificate the CD4 plus T cells and put one to five million of cells in culture that we stimulate with CD3, CD28 with or without the PDL1. And after 24 hours of uh, incubation, so at day one, we collect the, uh, the supernatant, centrifuge the, the virus, and we extract the RNA from the viral pellet and uh, quantificate the viral uh, RNA. And the uh, assay sensitivity is up to one RNA copy per ml. So using this technique, uh, we uh, took out naive chronically HIV infected subjects and we performed the experiment on the total CD4 plus T cells uh, on the triggering with or without the, the PDL1. And uh, as a control, we use an uh, IG PDL1 chimera. And uh, you can see here that the triggering of the PD1 pathway inhibits 60% of the HIV1 production in primary CD4 plus T cells. Uh, already after 24 hours of uh, stimulation. So that's a very short term effect of the PD-1 triggering on the HIV production. So maybe that's our hypothesis, the PD-1 triggering could act directly on the LTR. Another way to confirm these results was to perform the experiment in presence of antiretroviral uh, treatment. So that's exactly the same experiment. We measure the production by P24 ELISA. And you can see that uh, in presence of uh, art, the triggering of the PD-1 pathway inhibits 45% of HIV production in primary CD4 plus T cells at day three. 
So uh, this uh, inhibition is still observed in the three cases, so PD-1 directly impacts on the viral production. Then we wanted to assess the uh, specificity of this, uh, of this pathway. So for that, we uh, took total CD4 plus T cells from viromic HIV infected patients, and we, um, we uh, isolated the PD-1i cells from the PD-1 low uh, subset. Uh, by, uh, by cell sorting, and again, we stimulated with different combination of triggering antibodies, CD3, CD28 with pdl one or CD3, CD28 with the corresponding IgG isotype. And you can see that uh, the inhibition uh, conferred by the pdl one uh, beads uh, in blue is uh, restricted to the PD1i cells. So the inhibition of the viral production was excellent exclusively observed in this, uh, in this subset, indicating the specificity of this pathway. Then uh, the role for PD-1 in the maintenance of uh, reservoir. Uh, this is a strictly uh, analysis of the cells. So you can see here that there is a, a, a on the left panel, that there is a correlation of uh, um, on um, PD-1 expression with the reservoir size. And uh, also you can see on the right panel that uh, the sorted PD-1i cells in red preferentially are both the HIV integrated DNA when compared to the PD-1 uh, low uh, subset, which is in blue. So this uh, uh, PD-1i cells are enriched in total and also in integrated HIV uh, DNA, uh, meaning that PD-1 could have also uh, an, Im an impact on the, um, on the maintenance uh, of the reservoir. So what we want to know now, of course, is to purge this uh, reservoir. And uh, if PD-1 triggering inhibits the viral production, what we thought is, okay, maybe by blocking the PD-1, PD-L1 interaction, we maybe can increase the viral production. So we took CD4 uh, positive T cells uh, from uh, HIV infected subjects, and they were incubated with an anti-PD-1 antibody that uh, prevents the uh, interaction between PD-1 and uh, its uh, ligands. And you can see in, on these uh, three different donors, so the green is the mock control, the red is uh, the sample with the anti-PD-1 blocking antibody, and in blue, the isotope control. And you can see that uh, the disruption of the PD-1, PD-L1 interaction uh, had the, uh, as a consequence the spontaneous release of HIV-1 variants by the CD4 plus T cells. So uh, this uh, was also, we also checked for the activation markers in this experiment, and we didn't have uh, uh, any activation of the, of the cells. So in conclusion, the PD-1 uh, positive central and transitional memory CD4 plus T cells are enriched for HIV integrated DNA. The PD-1 receptor may be used as a specific marker to target HIV-1 uh, reservoir cells. The PD-1 uh, receptor triggering inhibits the viral production, meaning a possible role in the establishment of a reservoir. And the blocking of the PD-1, PD-L1 interaction induces viral production, may, meaning maybe a role in the maintenance of a reservoir. So now the question is what we want to assess in the lab is can we purge the HIV reservoir by disrupting the PD-1 negative pathway in art individuals? I would like to thank Nicolas Chaumont, Rafik Pierre Sekali, Mohamed El Far from Montreal, and also Mohamed Rachid Boulassel and Jean-Pierre Routy uh, for giving us access to, uh, to the cells from the patients at McGill University. Thank you. Thank you very much. You can take only one question, so the faster you leave your arm. There is no question. You have one. Yes. Uh, are you starting a program of drug discovery? Oh, sorry, Andrea, uh, you have to turn. I don't understand. Are you starting a program of drug discovery on the PD-1, PDL one interaction inhibition? And uh, is there a risk of transfer for a uh, dead guy? No, that not that I would know. Not us, but not that I would know. No. No. 
So you, you said that you're going to look into this in heart-treated patients. Um, can you tell us a little bit more how you're planning to do this? Are you going to do a clinical study or are you giving this to patients or how are you going to approach this? Uh, the next approach would be uh, to determine if the if PD-1 can have an, in it, um, an effect in the early uh, time points, as I, as I said, that's why we developed this technique, this sensitive technique to uh, see at the day one. And following the results, it could have an effect in the early time points. So what we plan to do is to uh, transfect cells with, uh, with uh, LTR and to see if uh, the... Um, uh, LTR GFP or LTR luciferase, and to see if the uh, PD-1 uh, pathway triggering could have already an effect in this uh, in directly on the LTR. So that's our next step.